a lot of people have been asking for this video. Big D wanted to know what this aluminum extrusion was, and I'm gonna go over it with you. The MFS is not available in every market in the world, but a lot of you have reached out and said, hey, I bought this, how do you set it up? Could you give me an overview? What have all the components for? So over the years, I've shown a lot of people on how to use the MFS system, and I wanna give you a bunch of tips and tricks on this killer templating system hinge routing system, uh, arc cutting and circle cutting. I'm not gonna cover it all today in this video. I'm gonna give you a basic overview of components and the setup and how easy it can be. So stay tuned. I'm gonna take Big D through this whole overview of the MFS system from Festival. <laughs> Big D, I saw you over here. What are you looking at? This guy right here, since day one, I've wanted to know what it is. So, what is it? It's a piece of aluminum extrusion. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Okay, so I'll just grab it. What is it? Is, see, this says MFS? Yep. It's a templating system from Festool. Um, there's different lengths, uh, 200, 400, 700, I always gotta remember this, 1,000 millimeter lengths and also 2,000. But it comes in a set, MFS 400, MFS 700. Okay. And let's do an overview of it and I'll show you how it all goes together. Sounds good. All right, Sage. So, I did a little research. I saw that there's two sets. There's a 400 and a 700. So, what's the difference? Okay, so the MFS, this is all the stuff that comes with it. Uh, the 400 says, hang on a second. Let's just go what it means by these numbers. Let's see, 200, 400, and 700. There's actually a scale on here, um, and that is that is so important. This is why this is a great system. But this is 700 millimeters long. It's the length of the, the extrusion. This is 400, and this is 200. Now, also available, okay, <coughs> are 1,000 lengths, 1,000 lengths, and 2,000 lengths, but the 2,000 doesn't have the scale on it. I just wanted to point that out. Um, so the MFS 400 comes with two 200 millimeters and two 400s. Okay. Okay, I always tell people, whenever they're looking at this system, get the set first, because it comes with all these components right here. Okay. Okay, the 700 system comes with two of the 400s and two of the 700s. Oh, okay. Okay, now, it also comes with these two pieces. I use these rarely, but this is an indexing system to put your template at a right angle. Okay. Okay, whether you put it here and here, um, or in line. Oh, okay. Okay, also it comes with a pivot point for your axe and circles. It also comes with this for doing your circles. And it comes with this, and this is, if this is a support, okay? Um, and you're gonna see the different numbers on there, 30, 40, 24, and 27, aha, uh -huh, 30. Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll understand all of this. This, it's a anti-tipping support oh, okay. for your router when you're doing larger projects. You'll see in a few minutes uh, what I'm talking about. And I got a great tip on this, kind of like a little bit of a hack. So those are the basic components of your MFS system. Cool. All right, Sid, I've seen these kicking around. What are these for? Okay, so that doesn't come in this set. And if I did say it, the set comes with this three millimeter ball hex right here, okay? That's for something completely different. These, when you purchase extrusions, particularly the, the 1000 and the 2000, these come with it. And you're gonna need a two millimeter uh, hex for this and what what I'm these are connectors okay. and you can connect the rails for any length you want so this system is infinitely adjustable they go in here just like this big D okay to connect rails you put one in see that and I mean I don't want to say it's obvious but you put one in here okay put one in here once you have one in here and one in here you just put them together like this, okay, and tighten them up. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this big D. Um, if you don't want to use these rail connectors that come with the little, the pairs or the sets, 
This is the little U-bolt that lives in here on the side, okay? And you're gonna notice, we're gonna be using these today, this little ball detent here, okay? And this is where the three millimeter hex works, okay? And that's why it's ball jointed like that, okay? So to connect these a different way, and the way I like to connect them, is I take that off and I push that forward like this. You see these little indexing pins? We'll be using these today to put these at right angles. But you're gonna notice they also live right in here in the extrusion. Cool. So if I take a rail connector like this and slide it in, you just gotta be patient with it. And I like to take a, a flat-headed screwdriver here like this just tighten it and you can see how much more stout that connection point is and look how that just slides together oh wow you still have a scale and like this and like this it just tightens up and that is a really stout and if you even want to you could put another one on the bottom okay okay but that's a great way to connect the rails especially if you're connecting larger ones like this sure to make a, a routing sled or something it's infinitely adjustable. That's awesome. So that's how you connect rails on the MFS if you need to. Just don't lose that little screw. You can actually back those out like this. Okay. And save them. Okay? Cool. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> so, the simplest way I can describe the MFS system, or what I call the, the heart of it, is it's right here. And you'll see it. We backed it out before. This is a threaded insert that goes into it. It's been ground, so it's flush with these loom extrusions. Okay. These set at a perfect right angle. Okay, and that's what these pins are for. And you'll see the pins, the pins help align it in there. Right okay. now, I wanna make sure we get in here, Chris, for this, because this is a U-bolt. And I'm gonna call, and as I call this out, and I've shown people over the years, that's the short side and that's the long side. The long side goes in first. Okay. And right here is a little bearing that's got a that is spring loaded, okay? The heart of it is that little U-bolt. Okay. Okay. So when we set this up, and what I'm getting at is I show people how to set this up, and I have my own technique because I used to get frustrated. Because once you make two right angles, then you gotta put those two right angles. This is an extremely precise ground system. Okay. So I'm gonna show you how to eliminate all frustration. Let's start off and make some L's with it. Okay. Okay. Um, let's take that little U-bolt. Remember I said the, the, one of the things I always do is I back it out as far as possible so I don't lose it. Okay. You're gonna see how that has got a very slight uh, rabbit on either side. That will fit perfectly in there okay. and lock itself in at a right angle. So what you want to do to do this is I always take it like this and I look, oh, my scales match up and I make what I call two L's. Okay, I'm going to do one and I'll have you do one. See how I hold it? So the long side goes in first. I find that and that slides right in. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll make sure that that is flush. The aluminum extrusion is flush. Okay, and I'll tighten it right here. That's as easy as it gets, and that's why you have that ball jointed one so you can get right in there and tighten it up and bring it together. That's a perfect 90. Nice. I'm gonna have you do it over here. All right, make sure our scales match up, make sure our U-bolts yep. back down. Yep. Long side first. Okay, so, yep, very good. Okay. Get it in there. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. Good job, mm -hmm. freaking perfect, okay? But that, you doing it up in the air mm -hmm. can get frustrating. Oh, okay. okay, so go ahead and tighten that. I always like to be on a level surface like this. Gotcha. But go Makes ahead and sense. tighten that. Yep, man. You're like a natural for this stuff, Big D. Well, I'm a visual learner. Yes, sir. Hands on, my kind of guy. Perfect. Go. All right, what's next? <laughs> okay. Hey, nice t shirt, by the way. Wait. Okay. Nice. So now we have to join these two right angles. Okay. They're very precise, very tight tolerance. This can be frustrating, okay? So when I first did this, or I was taught with this, is I would take that U-bolt and do this, watch, okay? Now everybody watching right now is going, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay? <laughs> and they're going like this, and you would get it started like this. See how that just matches up perfect? And then you would have to do this and this, and you would get, and it would rock back and forth. 
you would eventually get together, get it together, but it was really problematic. So oh, now this is an easy one. This is an easy setup because it's a 400. You get the two 200s, you get the two 400s. Okay. But what if it gets really big? So I was, I, I was shown how to put this together and then I was doing it by myself and I was putting together 700 and I was getting pretty frustrated. <laughs> And I thought, okay, I know the long end has to go in. So what I did is one of my favorite clamps is this. It's called the clamping element. Okay, and I know people who own uh, the MFS, and when I show them this, they go, wow, that'll make it easier. So I take it like this. Remember I said earlier, make sure this is backed out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it out like this, and I'll open it up as much as I can to give me that play. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll take it like this. What I'm giving myself is basically a third hand with this. And I'll put it just like this, and I'll take my clamping element. I'll bring it in here. So now I'm not in that balancing act, right? Right, okay. Okay, I have it completely backed out here, and I just take it like this. I use those indexing pins to get it started, and you'll see how that falls right in and then that falls right in like that. It's nice. super simple. So what I'm very cautious on this one, I bring that aluminum extrusion right in. Remember what your best feeler gauges are, right Chris? Is that finger, so that's nice and flush. Let me bring that up again so it's flush. Okay, just like this, boom. boom. Now I could take this, fold it forward, come in here, and that is how I get this together especially when it gets larger. Right. Okay. And that is a quick setup tip for the MFS 400. Now you have this scale. In future videos, I'll show you how to do squares to make a template, to route out a, a recess, uh, possibly do some, uh, uh, some fluting for a, a charcuterie board. But that is basically how this goes together. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so uh, some of the questions that come up, yeah, this is a great um, templating system, but how do I attach it to my template? And I've seen this over the years, where people have gummed these up and they have to constantly clean because they use this and they take double stick tape and they put it on. Nice. And you can use it that way. But a lot of people don't know, remember, this is a system. Check this out. You can lock it in with clamps. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so if I'm setting up something like this, I'll use these clamps on an MFT like this, and I'll get it rough like this. Okay, and then I'll find another hole I know is close, like over here. It doesn't have to be, right, exactly at a 90 degrees, as long as I can find out where my template's going to go in like this, I can set it up and then adjust my piece like this and then slowly bring it in so it doesn't bend, but I'll take it like this, I'll clamp it like this, I'll make sure it's on the marks that I want to route or wherever, but I just want to show you how easy it is to clamp like this, okay? And that won't move. That's awesome. Okay, and actually, you can actually take and adjust your template, just taking off a little bit of ease like this. See that? So it's fully adjustable. It doesn't have to be at a right angle. And I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that it works with clamps. Okay? That's awesome. So we get it clamped. We know it's not going to move. In future videos, I'll show you how to line up with scales, how to do the measurements with the template guy, whatever diameter router bit. There's so much to this, and it's all built in here with these scales. Emphasis, it's infinitely adjustable. You're not just making one template for one mortise. You can use this over and over and over. That's pretty cool. Okay, and really quick, this is a template guide. And this rides the edge like this, right? Okay, nice and smooth in this direction. Remember how I taught you? Yep. Okay. So if I put this, this is the beauty of the 1400, that's self-centering, right? I'm just going to take off the support bracket because I don't want that as a catch point. And as I'm going around here, what wants to happen? Tilt. It wants to tip in, right? Yep. Okay, now, a good router user will always be conscientious not to tip it. But check this out. This is called a support and I'll show you what it is you see the 30 mm -hmm. I'll line it up just like this okay 
bear with me, and you see how that flows around? That's cool. And if I put it on here, it supports it. And look, it won't get in the way as it goes around. Okay? Oh, wow. Now I will show you a hack for that. Okay, Big D, I'm gonna have you put the support bracket on the 1400. Remember, this is a 30 millimeter in diameter, outside diameter. So when we look at the support here, I, I call this the support puck. There's a 30, there's a 40, there's a 24, there's a 27. That means the outside diameter of that. So that's the 30 and that's that matches that uh, radius there. So go ahead okay. and put that on. And we just just, so yeah, just put, put it right. It nope, put it right in the groove. Right. In See in that groove. groove? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Get it right in there. Okay. Now go ahead, flip that over, and put the support bracket in oh. there. Think so. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Time out. I'm going to show you. I used to get frustrated with this myself. Okay. And this is a. I, I don't like the word hack. Okay. But this is a tip I want to show you. You were trying to balance that and get it in here for support, right? Mm -hmm. What's really difficult is to put the support down here and trying to fit it in that groove. So I always tell people, put it in the groove like this. Okay, just find it like this and look, rare earth magnet. Just put it like that, check this out. Isn't that sweet? That's freaking sweet. And that rare earth magnet will hold that because that's a steel template guide. So there's that tip you've been looking for. All right, Seth, so, First of all, this is freaking cool. Yeah. Right. And I see, I understand like standard mortising. You're doing your template. You got your squares, your arcs, all that stuff. Uh, what are these things for? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, you and I, will do a full video on this. Okay. So we'll do one on swinging axe. There's a lot to teach on that. Swinging circles, a lot to teach on that. I have some great tips and tricks on that. This is for doing circles and axe. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's a, I want to go over today the basic setup so people see that. And some people go, oh, I never knew that. Some people say, oh, man, uh, now I know what those are for. Okay, so I'm going to take this and we're going to just loosen this one here. Okay, just like this so it still moves. I don't want to take it apart because we did a great job putting it together. Okay, now what I want you to see is right here. Okay, there's a little hex in here. Okay, and if we look at this block, you see that? That makes this expand. Oh. Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do as I'm talking about this, could you go over and grab that 30 millimeter template? Yep. The other thing I want people to see in this is, I've taken a shappy and I've inked this and then I've cleaned it off. That makes this pop. That's another tip I've always shown with this because normally this is just etched in here and it's hard to read this scale. I do want you to check out that video when I go over acts and circles with this because I'm going to show you this little scale here why this is so important. Okay, so I'm going to put it in here like this. Okay, and I'm going to take it. I'm not going to fully tighten it, but I'm going to do is you see how I sandwich that in? Yep. So what I do is I sandwich it in here, and hopefully my head doesn't get in here, and I start to tighten this. Then I take it down here, see how that slides? And I start to tighten this way. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring it in and make sure it's tight. Okay, so there you go. And then the other thing I wanna do when I show you how to fully set this up. I'm just gonna bring it out here. I'm not gonna pick a number or anything. But when you tighten this, you make sure it's wicked tight. Because you don't wanna be swinging a circle and it ends up being a spiral, okay? Because <laughs> that may move. Now this is why I tell everybody, when you get the MFS system, make sure you get a 30 millimeter template because a lot of things with the MFS work off that 30 millimeter template. We saw it right here. Yep. When we were, you know, the support bracket has a 30 on it. Okay, now, you can use the MFS with any router. Um, it's hard to find, you just need a 30 millimeter template because that 30 millimeter fits right in there, nice and snug. So important to know, the 1400 from Festool, the 1010, there's a 30 millimeter for that, and there's a 30 millimeter for the 2200. Nice. Now a lot, of, and you'll, you can also get template guide adapters, and if you have another brand out there, uh, you can get a two-piece metric template guide. And somebody told me that one day, and I went out and I tried to find two-piece template guides in metric. 
I couldn't find them. So I just want to point that out. 30 millimeter template is needed, especially okay. when you swing in circles. You know, especially when you're using the support bracket. Okay. Now the other part of this equation is right here. You see the scale? Mm -hmm. I always put it down where it's the lowest because you can use this in conjunction with this scale. If I take this, and this is a pivot point, you see how it goes right down? Oh, look at that. It goes right into the center. Oh, wow. And you just tighten it up. It's got a little bushing here, and that's right in the center. So now, if I clear this, check this out. I can do circles all day long. I just have to drill that hole to hold that pivot point. Wicked cool. So there you go. Awesome. So, <laughs> big D, pretty cool, huh? Very cool. Uh, I know it's a brief overview for everybody out there, but I went through the basic components, the basic setup. You can see, and your mind's probably scrambling, thinking about all the different things. It just doesn't have to be an internal cut. You could actually use it and set it up for external cuts. There's so many possibilities with the MFS system. It's awesome. So as we always say at the end of these videos, be positive and stay sharp.